How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Data here, and welcome back to the Vancouver Canucks franchise mode here on NHL 24. Moving into episode number 25, the second half of year number 7, the 2029-2030 regular season. In the last one, we had an incredible start to the season. 27-9-5 is our record, on pace to go 54-18-10, which would be our best record so far with the Canucks here in our seventh season. So far, if you're just catching back up with the series, in year number 5, Stanley Cup champions year number six we take a big step back now in year number seven after a quick little retool in the off season it looks like we're right back in the mix through the halfway point we are leading the nhl the avalanche are right behind us by four points with four games in hand but we're definitely in that top two top three conversation through our 41 uh, games played so far our power play is looking great at 26.8 percent third best in the league and our pony kill could see some improvement at 82.1 but still among the top 10 12 or so in the nhl NHL so things are going very very well when we look at the scoring on this team we are currently being led by Stefan Markstrom in his first season here in Vancouver Markstrom was definitely the biggest acquisition from last episode he joins the flying Swedes in the top six another Swedish player to add to Pedersen, Lundqvist, Lekar, Mackey our top four players all Swedish I didn't note that last episode which is just crazy to say but Markstrom we got him the Montreal Canadiens just to quickly recap his storyline I'm always a bit wary when we get an RFA but this storyline really made sense Markstrom was the first overall picked by the Canadians in 2025, but in 2025, the Canadians also drafted James Haggins third overall. On top of that, Macklin Salabrini was already in the Canadians organization. So Marston got drafted first overall, but he had to spend another year in the SHL after being drafted first. Meanwhile, Haggins, who was drafted third, was given his entry-level contract and got to play in the AHL with Laval right away. So maybe that's water under the bridge or what, but once he made it to the NHL, Marston won the Calder Trophy, 73 points in his rookie season, 73 again, 76 the year after that, but after Haggins got his eight-year contract and Celebrini was on his eight-year contract, Markstrom was left without a contract and still sitting as a restricted free agent in September. So we said, listen, Montreal, we can sign him to a one-year deal and give you a second round pick, or we could trade for him and we can extend him long-term. It's a win for us, but also a win for you. We'll give you a little bit more value. So we sent a first, a second from two different drafts and uh, Cal Ritchie to the Montreal Canadiens. We acquired Markstrom's rights, signed him to the contract that he was waiting for, a seven-year extension, giving him 10.25 million. We tried to go for eight, but he really wanted seven. So we gave him the big, payday that he was waiting for and since then it has very much paid off he's on pace for a career high 92 points he's 22 years old only and if you didn't see him at the end of last episode just by the way it's an absolute travesty that you can't see these players and it's just their gray silhouette you got to go into edit player to check him out but markstrom if you got if you, if you didn't see him already check this out. one of the greatest generated players we've ever had without a question the gray afro the goatee everything just the silver surfer the silver sweet ridiculous fro and uh, and facial hair going on so love to see that from uh, from Markstrom we're happy to have him in the organization he's leading our team in points through the first half as well playing second line minutes plus first unit power play but on top of Markstrom check out the rest of the flying Swedes Elias Pettersson the last few years have and you know he hasn't really had the best line mates 83 points last year 71 the year before this year on pace for 90 points that would be the most that he would uh, have had uh, since 2022 23 102 points then he he hasn't been a great simulation player. That's also due in part to him not having the greatest line mates either. So Pedersen right now, he has um, uh, Atu Ratu on his left, who's not doing that hot. But Jonathan Lakaramaki, who has been on fire on his right. Lakaramaki, we were trying to squeeze some growth out of him. He's listed as a third line forward. Last year, he scored 52 points. We said, let's cross our fingers and bang, on pace for 78 points this season. 20 goals and 39 points in 41 games. Forget that he's an 83 overall. He should see some good growth and he should be able to be a lock for our top six. We have been waiting for this moment for the Karamaki and finally he's growing into uh, who we were hoping he would be. But don't forget Lundqvist as well. Frederick Lundqvist, we drafted second, uh, excuse me, third overall in 2029, just this past year in his rookie season. It really worked out that we took that step back last season because it allowed us to consolidate kind of who's going to be here, who could we move out for value for picks and those other picks were put together with other 
of things to move up from pick number 10 to pick number three. And here he is, Frederick Lundqvist, the Swedish sniper. 23 goals and 39 points in 41 games here in his rookie season. Also on pace for 78. Incredible shooting attributes. We love to see it. So we got the Swedish sniper. We got the Swedish chef, the Swedish surfer, the silver surfer, the top four players, all the, the flying Swedes. Incredible. We are very pro-Sweden here on the channel. But on top of that, hey, don't forget Owen Tippett on pace for 68 points. Last year put up 60. He put 68 with Philadelphia so he can get back to the pace that we were hoping he would be on when we acquired him. The high 60s would definitely be preferable. So he's looking good in the top six as well. Again, 85 overall. These are low overall guys. 85, 83, 82, all on pace for high 80s, 90 plus points. So we love to see that, but there's also some things that we're not loving so much, and that is the production from our defense. Philip Hronik, as a second pair guy, is leading our defense in points, and that defense includes Quinn Hughes and the newly acquired Evan Bouchard. So Hronik on pace for 58 points, that's incredible, but Quinn Hughes on pace for 56, this would be his third consecutive season of being a mid-50 point player. After our first two seasons with him, 91 points, 82 points, Calder Trophy, I'm not sure what's going on with Quinn Hughes. Part of it, definitely right now this season, is that he's playing with another offensive defenseman, but just in general, the last two and a half seasons had not been great for his production, and it's not just him as a player, it's him as an EA player. We know that he should be simulating, and we've seen him simulate so much better than this. So Quinn Hughes, we're going to play around with the defensive pairings this episode for sure. At two right too, he's been playing big minutes, almost 22 minutes per night. The days of him being a 34 goal, 63 point player are gone. 54, 59, on pace this year for 52. That's okay. A 50, mid 50 point player, that would be great from Ratu, but he's likely going to be a lock at left wing on the second line as opposed to on the first line. He's kind of been a placeholder there, and Lundqvist is going to be the guy who takes that spot sooner rather than later, it looks like. On top of that, Josh Norris, we know he's an expiring UFA. We've been thinking about maybe we move him. We'll talk about that in the comments in a moment. We got him in the Sam Reinhardt deal last season. This year, he's on pace for 48 points. It's unfortunate that we had to bump his ice time down because of the acquisition of Markstrom. It's 12.51 per night is not enough for an 87 overall, so I do feel bad that he should be producing more with a bigger role. But even then, he's doing shooting about 15%. We'll see if we can get some ice time for him this episode because we'll want to make some mixes in the top six. I'm going to get to that when we get to the comments in a moment. Sorry for a bit of the longer recap, but there's a lot to say from the last one. Evan Bouchard, we acquired him, his rights, then signed him before he could become a free agent. Last year, 67 points with the Oilers, 59 the year before, 44 the year before that, with very limited power play points. It's been five on five points. This year, on pace for a career high in power play points, only on pace for 40, which would be the lowest of his last three seasons. We are paying this man 10.75 million in the next four years, or the next three years after this one. He's got to pick it up. So is that partially due to him playing with, with uh, Quinn Hughes? We've got to split those two up. That's likely it. But it's a shock a little bit that Bouchard and Hughes are not producing more than they have been. I guess it's because two offensive defensemen together, but still a bit surprising for players at such high overalls. Caden O'Brien, 17 points from him this season. We were hoping this would be his year. His leash continues to get shorter and shorter. I wouldn't say we're forced to make a move now, but with the deadline coming up, he's an expiring RFA. I wouldn't say his future's looking very bright in Vancouver. But Colson, Goldman, a Hannafin, plus 16 from him. Neighbors, Klimovich, Bouillon, the rookie, Maxim Bouillon, who he drafted in the first round in 2028. He's making his NHL debut this season. Four points, plus seven in 41 games. Yes, it's probably too early for him to be playing in the NHL at a 77 overall, but we've seen way too much stagnation from defensemen who just don't grow past the high 70s. We said, let's try and get something going. Hopefully, he'll see growth this offseason. And then Andrew Peak. Looking at the goaltenders, we have Hunter Jones, of course, continuing his very steady play. 21-3-5 is his record with three shutouts through 30 appearances, 920 save percentage, 2.67 goals against average. He has been Mr. Reliable, so steady between the pipes, and we know what he did in the postseason in 2028 when we won our Stanley Cup a couple of years ago. So Hunter Jones, thank you very much. And the rookie, Ilya Lyanov, who we signed from free agency. He was a draft pick by the Hawks, who they just let go. He's 6-6, six and six. rough numbers, I will admit, but he is a rookie with the growing overall, signed on for one more year at a cheap AAV, so hopefully he can just kind of find his groove now in the second half. So sorry for the longer than normal recap. Just want to get you to where we are with such a busy first half of the season last episode. We thought maybe are we still retooling what's going on? But no, boom, back on top of the league halfway through year number seven. But before we can continue, we'll have to hear from the assistant general managers who had a lot to say in the last one about some line combinations. As good as this team has been, there are some things to consider. 
So we'll go ahead and start it off with Tate, who left a comment saying the Hughes-Bouchard pairing is not working. Their plus-minus is really bad, and I think it's at least part of the reason why the top forward line has a poor plus-minus as well. I think those two need to be split up, whether it's Hannafin-Bouchard top pair or Hughes-Hronik top pair. I know Hannafin and Hronik have been playing great together for a few years now, and I'm worried about splitting those two up, but I think it's worth it to spread out the two offensive defensemen. Definitely something to experiment with before the playoffs. I could not agree more. Very well said. And it's a true point the plus minus on the first line is also not great either plus three zero and zero while the second line is plus 25 26 and 21 so the defense as we see again hughes negative one negative two from bouchard second pair plus 16 plus 23 on top of that quinn hughes's norris season came when he played with philip Peronic. so it does kill the chemistry unfortunately from plus one plus one to zero zero so no chemistry anywhere but as we've seen in the past chemistry does not make or break a lineup so hughes Peronic will be the top pair for the time being. We could try Hannafin Bouchard. It would still be 0-0 for the chemistries, but I think Hughes has to be the guy as captain, as the one who's done it before. He's the one who's going to be given that first opportunity, and if it's still not working, then we'll try Bouchard up on that top pair with Hannafin. But hughes Ronick, it's a classic pair. It's worked before. Hronick and Hannafin have been together for a few years now, and there have been great plus-minuses. 8-9 uh, and nine last year, but 34 the year before that. I, but was he... I forget if he was still with uh, Hannafin at that point. But even in the playoffs as well, plus 15 so there have been some good years for uh, Hronik and Hannafin. We'll break them up for the second half of the season, at least to start, and we'll see what happens from there. So a lot of other comments that echoed those same thoughts about the top four defense. I can't go through all of them, but I did want to highlight this one from Gavin. As Gavin said, man, those three years in Montreal really did some terrible things to Markstrom. Love the trade, though, and the team is looking good. I would maybe consider swapping Hronik and Bouchard around. Hughes had his Norris winning season with Hronik on his side, and two offensive defensemen on a pairing doesn't work great in my experience. I agree. I just thought that two higher-end ones would work out, but it hasn't really been the case. Other than that, a quick shout-out to Lungfist and LeCaramacchi for far surpassing expectations. Expectations. Not much else to add while the team is doing so well. Just keep pushing and add at the deadline if necessary. Big key there, if necessary. No need to mortgage futures when we are top of the league anyways. Great video data, and I'll see you in the second half. And congrats for four years of dedicated content creation. Thank you for that, Gavin. I mentioned it a bit last episode, but now the anniversary has passed on March 24th, 2020, the day that I really said I'm going to go heavy on content creation. Four years later, over 7,000 new subscribers later, over 1.6 million views later. I love the community that we have here and Gavin I appreciate you for highlighting it. After last episode being titled The Flying Swedes and our top four scorers all being from Sweden, you had to know that the Swedes would come out in full force in the comments. That's exactly what we see from Liverpool FC's branch in Sweden, leaving a comment saying, been waiting for this and more Swedes? Love it. Little disappointing with plus minus on the first line, but it'll improve, I guess. With all these Swedes, I almost expect you to speak Swedish soon. I'm almost expecting it myself. If you want the perfect pronunciation, which I do, how you'd say the word step, but remove the P and add fan, so more like Stefan, instead of step, step, Fan, Stefan, yeah, I think I've been saying that pretty well. The Markstrom is where I've been getting, uh, struggling a little bit, because the O in Markstrom is pronounced like the letter U in the word burn. Er, 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 burn. Er, 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 waiting to hear it next episode. So here I am, if it's Markstrom, uh, Mark Str uh, uh, um, I you know I want to say the Mark Strum, but I I gotta try and hold myself back a little bit. So Mark Str uh, um, is that okay if I say Stefan Markstrom? Is that okay? Let me know. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. You're the man. Th appreciate you, my friend. Thank you. Going over to Cheating Heels comment now and jumping down a couple paragraphs. Cheating Heels says, I'm quite concerned with Ratu's sim the last couple of years and his rating and potential being all over the place. 88, 85, low elite, top six, what's going on? We probably need to put him back on line two or three and have him earn back his ice time. I gotta say, I agree. We love, love, love Ratu, but I'm not sure about him being first line left wing long, long term here. As Lundqvist continues to get better, we have other players who could fit in there. I'm not sure. Moving on, Bouchard is also underperforming on that big contract we gave him we can probably swap him with Heronic and see what happens so or even swap Hughes with Hannafin if the chemistry is better that way yes now here are a couple of interesting thoughts Norris has decent production while being buried in the bottom six maybe we bring him up and try him in Ratu's spot for a while and see how both respond that's very interesting and then for Caden O'Brien he needs to either get better fast or he could be gone at the deadline we could also try to acquire a backup goalie and give um, Leonov a bit of time in the AHL if he continues to 
struggle. So that's a very interesting point there. At Turatu, we're thinking it's probably best if we move him off the top line. He's getting a lot of minutes, power play, penalty kill, that won't hurt him. We know who he is at this point. He's a mid-50, middle-6 player. As opposed to being a top-6, more like first-liner, he'll be a more like a middle-6, more second-liner. So if we want to put him down on the second line, of course the long-term goal is to have Lundqvist on the first line with Pedersen and Lekaramaki. But I don't think we can break up this second line. It has been too good. So I'm thinking maybe Ratu comes down to the third line, reinforces what's going on over here a little bit. O'Brien negative three, put Coles in negative one, reinforce them a little be bit. Be a good defensive checking type of third line. And Josh Norris, who's an expiring UFA, not coming back next season anyways, let's even get some offense out of him. He has a great fit on the first line. We've seen good things from him. It's hard to show it here, but we've seen good things from him when he's been higher up in the lineup. Unfortunately, he's been buried due to circumstance. But if we can try to just boost his value a little bit, whether it be to trade his rights or trade him away completely at the deadline, whatever it might be, just in general, he might be a good boost for that second line. 81 face-offs, so technically he could go center and Pedersen goes on the wing as Pedersen has the left wing eligibility. So we could try that as well. It wouldn't be crazy. Then Ratu could go down here on the third line. Not really a great centerman at 71 face-offs. O'Brien could technically go as well. But, you know, I wouldn't mind having him be third line center for a little bit. See how he responds. We go from there. Or maybe even O'Brien comes to the first line because you know that like, his time is running out. Yes, his production for a third liner has been okay, but long term, we have other players in the pipeline who want to take those, those, those winger spots. Cody Brown, uh, Miko Niskala, maybe even Gustavo Kelly someday if he could grow, but really those top two guys, Niskala and Brown, and they're not going to be able to get those spots if Put Colson and uh, O'Brien are always taking up the room. If they're producing, that's fine, but O'Brien has to really show us something to be interested in. So we could try a third line like Ratu, Norris, Put Colson with O'Brien going up, or maybe Norris goes up and then we try the third line looking like this. There's a couple different possibilities there. And of course, the goaltending, I mean, I still give Leon a little bit of a chance here, but he is not waiver eligible, which could mean that he goes down to the AHL no problem. And maybe we call up Oscar Janssen to try a little bit of NHL time. I don't know. But we still have some possibilities at goal 10. We don't need to make any trades just, just yet. We still have some time between now at the halfway point and the deadline to make more decisions. Cheating Heel finishes off by saying that Marshall looks like Kenny Omega when he was the cleaner in New Japan with his grayish hair. I had no idea what that meant. I had to look it up, and Cheating Heel is exactly spot on. I don't really know much about wrestling at all. All I really know is Kevin Nash, what a pittance. If you're in the Discord server, you know. But great season to start. Let's keep at it. It does feel like Lungfist and Markstrom have completed our retool, and we can now go back to being solid contenders. Go Nux. Thank you, Cheating Heel. Going over to Cam in the Discord server now, who left a comment saying, Markstrom to Lungfist will feed Vancouver families for years. Absolutely it will. Those Swedish meatballs are coming to a store near you. In addition to Markstrom being a stud, it seems like he took some weight off of Pedersen's shoulders. Great news there. While he isn't Pedersen necessarily putting up more himself, having multiple forwards on pace for 85 plus is significantly better than just one putting up 90. Also, I think Ratu needs to be demoted as he's being carried by Tippett and Pedersen. I think what Cam means is Lekarmaki and Pedersen, but the point still stands and the top line needs a shake-up going off of plus-minus. Maybe swap with Norris? Cam read my mind there. Good thoughts. I think Bouchard and Hughes need to be split and just go Hughes, Hronik, Hanif, and Bouchard. Yeah, we did that. And if we want to make moves around the deadline, maybe we get real spicy and look at turning Ratu into Verhege, maybe? But more realistic, probably look at a Maxim Bouillon replacement as he's if he's still struggling after getting power play time. Something we want to add this episode. And then possibly, most importantly, hashtag Jones for Vezina. Couldn't have said it better myself. Then Cam also said, just got to this part, but someone needs to double check Marshall's birth certificate. <laughs> At 22 years old, let's just say he's looking wise beyond his years. And last comment before we get started, I just want to highlight this one. I already replied to it in the comments down here on YouTube. I just want to highlight it. First time comment from Sam, who's been watching since the NHL 23 series with the Sharks. So I just want to say a big thank you to Sam. I know there's a lot of you who are watching in the background, not always leaving comments, and that's perfectly fine. But I appreciate hearing from you. Whenever you have a minute to spare, to leave a comment. It's very much appreciated, and I thank you all for the viewership. Whether or not you're leaving the comments, thanks for it. Sam left some great thoughts. We broke it all down, and I thank you for them. So, having taken all those comments in, whether we saw them or not, the general consensus seems to be, let's get Ratu off the top line, let's try and see what O'Brien can do in the last 20 games for the deadline, maybe make a decision on him soon, but he will be an RFA, so eh. Maybe look at some veteran depth as well. If we get an injury or something, Klimovich could probably be 13th forward, as opposed to he's already in the lineup, and then Akura too is the 13th forward, so maybe get a little bit of depth there for me, the fourth line. On defense, let's have Hughes, Hironik, Hanif, and Bouchard. 
Bouchard back. That is done. And for the goaltending, maybe some better backup options for Because us. Leonov looks good as an 82 overall, but as a rookie, if we need to turn to him for whatever injury reason, we'd probably feel a little uh, unsettled if we had to do that. So just want to quickly do a couple of edits here. Our power play has been great, but I do want to make a little bit of a change here. Evan Bouchard, seven power play points on the season. I'd rather split these two guys up as, as well as splitting them up on their defensive pairing. So we'll keep Quinn Hughes as the quarterback on the right side as a left-handed shooter, but Evan Bouchard's going to come off the first unit. He's going to go to the second unit. I think Ratu probably comes for Bouchard. It maintains the plus five. It allows, and he has a really hard shot so he can still stay at the point. And then on the second unit here, it does hurt the chemistry, unfortunately. Bouchard's going to go here. Maybe even O'Brien comes off if we can put him first line. Has O'Brien done anything on the power play? Three power play points. Maybe O'Brien comes off the power play. Bouillon's going to get a chance to go there. Unless even Ratu comes off as well. I don't know, it gives it the plus one. Bouillon can play some power play time to bump up the ice time. I want Tom Goldman's got ice time too as well. And stuff. Ratu's getting a lot of ice time. You know what? Yeah, he's getting a lot of ice time already. Let's do this. Let's go O'Brien first unit to bump his ice time more than anyone. Especially if he's going to stay third line for now and maybe see the first line later. We still have the plus five, which is great. Quinn Hughes is still going to stay as the quarterback. Very good. And then on unit number two... And now we get the plus one, like we said with Bouillon. Distributor, Bouchard, finisher, puck carry. Yeah, so we'll do that. We won't touch the pony kill yet. We thought that maybe we could use a little tweak there. I just don't want to do too much right away when we have a good thing going for us. A change on the first line, a change on the defense, a little tweak on the power play, but we don't need to do too, too much when we're sitting on top of the league. So we'll keep the point totals through 41 games in mind. Let's simulate 10 games and go from there. Let's see how Norris does on the first line. Let's see how O'Brien does in the first unit of power play. Let's see. So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, it was a bit of a longer intro, as I had said. Lots of comments to go over. Thank you, everyone, for adding your thoughts to the collective. Let's now start simulating, and the first game of the second half will be here in Vancouver as we host the Blue Jackets. So let's do it. They are 18, 17, and 2, trying to get back to 500. We're looking for a win number 28 as we continue our pace to try to get to 54 wins. Let's do it, ladies and gentlemen, here in Vancouver, kicking off the second half. First period, 1-0 Blue Jackets early. It's Gavrikov scoring on Leonov, who got the start here. Shots 11-9 for Vancouver, and we're down 1-0 after 20. Second period, and it's 1-1. Elias Pettersson ties it up on Spencer Knight. 23-20, the shots now in our favor. We're all tied up through 40. Final 20 minutes to decide it, and it's Caden O'Brien. There you go, even strength goal, as he's now playing on that third line with Aturatu. Caden O'Brien, he's trying to fight for his life here in Vancouver. McLeod ties it up at two. Power play Blue Jackets now. Extended opportunity for Columbus. Columbus, we kill it off. We're now down in the shots by a little bit. Five minutes to go, tied at two. Do we have a hero late? Next one might be the winner. Shots tied at 30. Final minute of this one. We're headed to overtime. Shots 31 34. Columbus, three on three. Overtime. It ends early, and we take it with Quinn Hughes. The captain wins it in overtime. He's heard the rumblings here from the AGMs, and 26 seconds into overtime, he ends it. Shots tied at 31 to end it, but we win 3 2 in overtime. The captain gets first star honors, Pedersen a goal and an assist, but Liana possibly his best, the best game of his career, 29 saves for him on 31 shots, and he gets the victory. All right, nice 3-2 victory to start off the simulation here. Any game you want to see? Actually, ooh, Florida 25-14-2. and two. Let's go see them before we get some simulation going. Let's go see a couple games to start the episode. Why not? Then we'll get simulating the first 10 games before we check in a game 51 or so. First period. Wow, 4-1 Vancouver after 20th. Josh Norris scoring twice on that top line. Lundell opens up. Liana starting again. I got to check that out. Norris opens up for us. He ties the game just like 20 seconds after Lundell scores. Ratu down on that third line. LaCaramac on the top line and Norris his second once again on the top line shot tied at 12 second period LeCaramacki 7-2 the extra points good LeCaramacki with the hat trick within the first 25 minutes and 20 seconds hat trick for Jonathan LeCaramacki Lundell has his second Tippett adds another Shots tied at 23, but it's 7-2 Vancouver after 40. Make that 8-2 after 41. Power play goes, and Bouillon, his second goal of the season. First career power play goal, and Caden O'Brien makes it 10 double digits. Woo-hoo-hoo. Barkov makes it 10-3. Caden O'Brien, the, the, the scoring has come from our line changes, absolutely. The scoring has come from our line changes. The first, the third line, the power play units. Wow. 
10-3, and that'll be all she wrote. Shots end 36 to 31, and we embarrass the 25 and whatever Panthers. Six point night from Josh Norris on that top line. He said, Who are you thinking about trading? Caden O'Brien's three points. Lakaramaki and Pedersen three points as well. Bouillon with two. Probably possibly the first multi-point game of his career. Bouchard with a couple. Woo-hoo! Wow. And 28 saves from Leonov. Anybody pointless in this game? A few peak plus three, neighbors negative one. Funnily enough, Lundqvist with zeros in that one. Klimovic also negative one. Wow, what a game. You don't see 10 goals very often. Norris first star. Lekaramaki with a hat trick, second star. And Pedersen a goal and two assists gets him third star. What a start. I don't know. I don't know if I want to stop uh, doing the slow sim. Let me just make sure auto goalie rotate is not uh, playing around. No, auto-rotate goalies is turned on. Okay, just a couple of starts for Leonov then. All right, let's just make sure Jones is starting the next, though. But it's good to see that we can have a little bit more in confidence in Leonov now. Back-to-back -back wins with 900-plus save percentage. Very good. Next game can be against the Calgary Flames here, looking for win number 30. No reason to stop slow-simming either. If we're going to win with 10 goals, let's at least slow-sim another one. And yeah, Jones back to starting. Very good. So a couple starts for Leonov, getting him... Uh, Back accustomed to it. He wasn't playing too, too much. So good to see him back in the crease. Let's do it here against the Flames. We're 19, 20, and 2. Let's look for win number 30. First period. 4-1. <laughs> Klimovic on the fourth line. Goldman on the fourth line. And Lundqvist said, hey, did you forget about me? Two goals from him to end off the period. Jonathan Huberdeau scoring the lone goal for the Flames. 4-1 Canucks after 20. Second period. Make it 6-1. Maxime Bouillon! Three goals in the last two games after scoring one in 41. Power play goal and an even strength goal from the same spot. From like almost behind the goal line in the corner. What? 6-1 after 40. I guess we'll just call it a day on this one. 7-2 to two the final. Quinn Hughes scores shorthanded. Hansik scores late. 31 saves on 33 shots from Hunter Jones. Two goals from Lundqvist. Two goals from Maxime Bouillon. While Francis is in the stands somewhere looking down with pride. Again, no reason to stop the slow sim. I hate doing so many slow sims because it eats up a lot of time. But there's win number 30. Ooh, Hannafin and a fourth for Lekkonen and Faxa. I'll pass, thank you. We just got win number 30. The Sabres want win number 30. They won the Stanley Cup three years ago. We won the Cup two years ago. So there's a good matchup as they're looking for their 30th win. First period, 1-0 Zach Benson on the power play. Second period, 1-1 Elias Pettersson on Devin Levi. Shots are 21-20 for the Sabres through 40. Tie game here, not a blowout. Tie game, no seven goals, 10 goals after two periods or whatever it was. Halfway through this third period, we're leading in the shots, 32-26. Power play opportunity for the Canucks. Killed off by the Sabres, our expansion brothers from 1970. Maxim Comtois puts the Sabres ahead 2-1. Will that be enough late? Do we have late heroics in the final minute? No, Benson adds the, the empty netter. Shots end 38-30, and, the, and the, um, the Sabres win that one by a score of 3-1. All right, so our first loss since making those changes. Couldn't go forever. Let's get to the calendar now. We're going to go ahead and simulate through the game against the Blackhawks. That's going to be game number 51. It'll be exactly 10 games. Uh, actually, no, because we started in game 42 then. So actually, yeah, we should sim through the game against the Blues. 2-1 loss on the road against the Ducks. 3-2 overtime win. 5-1 loss. 3-2 overtime win. 4-1 loss. 8-7 overtime win against the lowly Blackhawks. Whoa. And that now brings us to game 51. Yeah. No, that is 10 games. Yeah, yeah, that is 10 games. I'm uh, having trouble counting here. 33, 13, and 5 is our record through 51 games now. And when we look at the point totals, Pedersen has gone off since getting Norris on his line. Pedersen has scored, looking at my, at my uh, notes here, 13 points in 10 games. All right, 13 points in 10 games. And Pedersen, also a plus 10. He was a zero. He's now a plus 10. So great to see from the first line. Marshall has scored six points in 10 games. All right, that's fine with me. Like Karamaki has scored eight points in 10 games. Lungfist, six points in 10 games. Again, that's okay with me. But Josh Norris, he had, whoa, he had 24 points. That's 17 points in 10 games from Josh Norris. What in the world? 17 points in 10 games? Yeah, we're going to keep him there for a little bit, I think. I think, if that's okay. Tippett, only three points. Uh, Quinn Hughes, nine points in 10 games, finally. Uh, we know he won't end with like 80 or 90 at this point, but if he can have a second half pace 
of close to point per game, that would be great. Ronick, seven points. Ratu, six points. That's fine. Good. Shard, seven points. O'Brien, five points in 10 games. Yeah, these are all good things to see. Very, very good. And Bouillon, he had what? Four points in 41 games. Now five points in the last 10 games. He's on... So after being on a... 10 point pace in the first half of the season. He's on a 40 point pace to start the second half of the season. <laughs> and goaltending, Jones looking great. Yeah, but I did notice the fourth line plus minus still struggling a little bit, eh? When I look at the bottom guys, yeah, Klimovic negative eight. He was negative five, so that's negative three in the last 10 games from Klimovic. Yeah, we're definitely keeping an eye on the fourth line. But okay, great to see. The, the first 10 games were just a little bit of to say, are we on the right track? I'd say we absolutely are. So let's continue to sim towards the deadline. I have to pause for the scouting probably around this point, around Valentine's Day. So we'll sim through the first game against the Avalanche. Probably the, yeah, they're right behind us with the President's Trophy race. So we'll sim through the first game against the Avalanche in Vancouver. Then we'll go to see the second game against the Avalanche in Colorado. 3-2 shot loss to the Blues for the All-Star break. In San Jose, 5-3 loss. And then at home, 8-3 loss against the Avalanche. So it seems like the calendar sim is not our friend right now. That's the unfortunate truth so far from this line combination. I'll pause for the scouting, then we'll get back in just a moment. My apologies, our scouting reports are actually done on the 19th of February, so we'll just keep going a little bit more. Now, after losing to the Avalanche 8-3 to at home, being embarrassed in front of the home fans, we're going to Colorado and trying to get some redemption here. Let's do it. First period, 1-0 Vancouver. Lekaramaki on the power play, love to see that. Second period now, Avalanche tied up. It's Tulipov on Hunter Jones. Shots 24-21 for Colorado through 40. Early power play Avalanche to start the third period. We kill that off. But then Miles Wood scores soon after. And McKinnon right after him. Quickly down two now. 3-1 Avalanche. Power play Vancouver. Killed off by the Avs. Not looking good, and that'll be all she wrote. 4-1 Avalanche late. Power play, yeah, just piling it on. Let's just take some penalties when we're down by three. Beautiful shots. And 41-26. So those first 10 games were great, but whoa, we're at, we're at a four-game losing streak now? 3-6-1 in our last 10? Come on, let's wake up here. At home against the Aval against the Red Wings. 6-2 win. Thank you very much. Three-point game from Pedersen. One more against the Coyotes before we pause for the scouting. On the road in Arizona. 5-4 win. Thank you very much. All right, a couple of wins to break that little streak. Win number 35. I'm going to go do the scouting now, then we'll get back to the calendar. Okay, scouts are all set. Seven games left until the trade deadline. Let's go another week or so, another four games. Flyers, Canadians, then a little back-to-back. -back. A third and a fourth for a third in Nico Sturm. Essentially a fourth for Nico Sturm. No, thank you. Hosting the Flyers, 5-3 win. Hosting the Canadians, 5-2 win. Blackhawks fire their coach, Walker Fiddler. All right. Hosting the Bruins, 3-2 loss, and then a 4-2 loss. So back-to-back -back wins, back-to-back -back losses. So we had a little four-game winning streak going there. Then back-to-back -back losses by one goal, by two goals on Unfortunate. We'll do one more game against the Hurricanes, then we'll have a back-to-back -back against the Maple Leafs and the Sharks before the deadline. Hosting the Canes, we win 5-4 in the shootout. 38, 18, and 6 is our record. Let's slow some these last two, see if we can get to 40 wins. We're facing the 37, 19, and 3 Maple Leafs, a very good team as well. Let's see if we continue to have good luck in the slow sim. I'm very curious. First period, 1-0 Mitch Marner. Second period, 3-1 Nylander and Marner again there. Goldman scoring our lone goal. Shots 21-16, to 16, I think it was. Yikes, 4-1 Maple Leafs now, and 4 goals and 18 shots on Hunter Jones. Yikes, and we're just not getting anything past the Rodriguez. Yeah, Hattrick Marner, and it ends 6-2. Tippett scores one more. So, shots end 33-22, but we lose 6-2. Come on, guys. Goaltending. Jones allows 6 goals on 22 shots, 727 save percentage. Lovely. One more. Let's give Leon of the start here. Let's see what we can do against the Sharks on the road. They are below 500. Let's give a little bit of a boost to ourselves for the deadline. we got to seriously consider some moves. First period, 1-0 Quinn Hughes. Second period, 2-1 LeCarrie in the power play. Both our goals in the power play. Will Smith gets one. Shots 26-15 to in our favor. We're only up by one. Power play Vancouver to start the period. Killed off by the Sharks. Five minutes in. Shots continuing to be uh, more in our favor. We're close to doubling now. 10 minutes to go, still a slim one goal lead, shots 35-22, now with 5 to go, no scoring here in this third period into the final, 2 minutes now, holding on to our lead, will it be enough? Just barely, shots end 41-24 to and we barely get the 2-1 victory, come on guys, Leonov looked good, Leonov looked good. All right, so that brings our deadline record to 39-19-6 with 18 games left to go on the season. 
We are sitting third in the NHL, one point back of the Avalanche, but they have four games in hand on us, so I don't know if we'd be in the President's Trophy mix just yet right now. Our goals for seems to be down 3.56 per game, at least relatively. The Avalanche and the Sabres up there at over four. We're at three and a half. Goals against per game, 3.14. Uh, we're at, what, eighth least? Okay, power play 26.8. Still around the same number, still third in the NHL. Penalty kill down to 80.4. Yeah, we got to make a change on the penalty kill. That's gone down a couple of percents. Yeah, yeah, yeah we got to make a change on the penalty kill. So in the last 23 games now, since the halfway point, March went to 69 points. That's great. That's 23 points in the last 24 games. No problem. Pedersen leads the team 73 points in 64 games. Big playmaking season from him. He has 28 points in the last 23 games. So all right, all right, all right. The Flying Swedes are still the Flying Swedes. Lundqvist has scored 16 goals and 19 points in the last 23 games, bringing him to 58. Like Karamaki also had 58 with 32 goals. So 12 goals and 19 points from him in the last 23 games. Josh Norris, 26 points in the last 23 games. Hard to say that we should take him off that top line. Really crazy from him. Same for Quinn Hughes, 22 points since being reunited with Philip Peronik. Tippett has slowed down though at 47. That's 13 points in the last 23 games from him. Ratu, of course, he's slowing down because of the ice time, down from almost 22 minutes a night to now 18.33. That's okay. 35 points in 64 games so far. That's okay. Bouchard has scored 12 points in 23 games. Negative five. There's negative two before. Kane mm. O'Brien just, it's not working out for him here. 24 points. That's what, seven points in the last 23 games. He had a hot start since having Ratu on his line, but... Since then, I'd want to give him some time on the first line. I guess it's too late now. Norris has been so good, though. It's hard to excuse giving him the first line minutes. So I'm not looking to shop him necessarily, but if something is there in, in the, on the trade blocks, I don't know. Tom Goldman, that's seven points from him. Hannafin put goals in down the list there. Bouillon at 11. Okay, so he slowed down his pace as well. Klimovic, negative 12. Yeah, so fourth line and maybe even third line. Bottom six changes to be made there here at the deadline. Jones, 29, 12, and 5. Leonov's back above a 900 save percentage, but Jones has been roughed up. 908 save percentage, 3.06 goals against. Both goalies at three goals against or above. Yeah, we got to change something in the bottom six, absolutely. So we'll start scrolling through the trade blocks. Of course, prospects would be great, but we want to look more for roster players, bottom six guys. So Anaheim, we'll start off with them. Arizona, we're looking at forwards, right? Forwards. The defense has been okay enough. We have McIsaac even as 7th D. We've been lucky for the injuries, I'll say that. Of course, I'm jinxing it, but we've been very lucky for the injuries. Boston, nothing super interesting. I know we looked at Nyquist, but nothing super interesting for right now. Buffalo, Calgary, Carolina, good prospects here in Carolina. Chicago has Ryan Hartman, and a terrible contract. Uh, Colorado, Columbus, Dallas, Pinelli, Francesco Pinelli. One game this season for five minutes. Yeah, hard to excuse picking up. Maureen Sider still on the block in Detroit. That's crazy. 30 points plus four on the year. I'd love to get him, but we can't trade Bouchard so early into his contract just yet. Kayla Yamamoto on an expiring deal. Ugh, 21 points, negative 13. Cody Glass, he was great in our Shark series, but again, tough numbers. I know on a bad team, but tough, tough numbers. Here in Edmonton, all gold, all goalies, all defensemen on the block here in Edmonton. As tempting as it is to see high overall players like that, we're looking at the forwards, really. Florida, no Verhege anymore. LA, Johnny Goudreau, two years left on his contract, under five million. A little bit of a scoring boost, but eesh, he's got the X factor. According to three bar pro scout assessment, he'd fit the first line. Do I really want to trade Caden O'Brien for Johnny Goudreau and his 4.895 million? E, I don't know. Minnesota, nothing special. Montreal and Nashville. Philip Forsberg. We were looking at Philip Forsberg. Man, how are they doing here in Nashville? But they're a winning team. Uh, I'd love to do some sort of swap O'Brien and a pick for a Forsberg on an expiring contract on a bad team. But no, they're a very good team. It wouldn't make sense for Forsberg to leave. He's definitely on some sort of full no movement clause. Ah, Devils, Justin Barron. Islanders, defensemen. Yeah. Rangers, Delandria. Senators, Dylan Sprong, in though two years, guys. The guys with two years left. Dylan Sprong, he's looking good. He's looking good. He's playing second line and first unit power play. Senators are not too great, but I don't know if that would work for us, Dylan Sprong. Two years, I don't know. 
Uh, Alex Newhook, Vladimir Tarasenko. Tarasenko could be a guy. Flyers, again though, they're a good team. Why do they want to move these guys? Tarasenko would be great depth scoring for us, despite the plus minus. Ah, Pittsburgh, San Jose, Seattle, Dunn and Edmondson. St. Louis, okay, St. Louis, there, here we go. Losing team, Nicolas Roy on the block right now. Here we go. 16 goals, 22 assists, plus 7, 38 points on the year. Two-way forward, four-star defense. That will be very helpful in the bottom six, I'll tell you that. Making $6.2 for one more year after this one. It might be digestible. Could always flip somebody who has value. Flipping Goudreau or someone like that would be tough, but flipping a guy like, with value like a Roy, that could be possible. Let's keep him in mind in St. Louis. Yep. Yeah. Tampa Bay even. Whoa. But they're a winning team there. Uh, Hagel has some sort of full no-movement no clause. Same for Shirelli. Lusterainen, two years left. No. Kucherov, two years left. To win. No, of course not. Kuzmenko, our old friend. Kopp could be interesting with one year left on his deal. But again... Uh, the Lightning are a good team. I don't know why the teams have, who have who should be sellers are not selling, and the buyers are not buying. Vegas, uh, okay, they're finally a 500 below or below team. Morgan Geeky expiring deal on their block. He's looking good. 13 goals, 32 assists. Morgan Geeky, 45 points in 60 games. Four star defense, playing first line though. That's why he's playing first line. Expiring contract, pure rental. How's Dougie Hamilton doing here? Ah, Dougie, Dougie, Dougie. So, okay, Geeky, yeah. Washington, you follow, I follow, you follow. Two-way forward again, three-and-a-half-star defense only. 48 points on the season, 62 games. Uh, okay, ah, why am I even looking? These teams are winners! Trennan could be a depth guy. He's played four games this season. What a joke. Yakov Trennan played four games this season. I'd be interested in picking him up, but I don't know how much value do I, he's assigned for one year after this one. What kind of value does he have if I throw at you a third round pick, right? Yeah, not even close. So forget, I'm not giving you a second or a first for Yakov Trennan who's played four games this season. So if we go back to uh, St. Louis, yeah, St. Louis, 22, 33, and 6. If we look at a potential Roy deal, let's explore that a little bit. I'm going to see what kind of package we could send back, if any. So I've been thinking about it, and if we were to go after Nicolas Roy, this would pretty much be the cost. Basically, our top prospect who's not in the NHL according to trade value, and a third round pick. Honestly, I don't think that's a price I really want to pay for a player who we might not even have a spot for next season. Now we could say if Wall's coming in and taking O'Brien's spot that we'd trade O'Brien, but the value wouldn't, it would be tight. I think we'd have to maybe make it a, a third and a fourth, or we'd just have to add more. I don't know, just I'm not super comfortable giving picks right now. We already traded a first and a second in the Markstrom deal. I don't feel like giving up picks here. If anything, it would be later picks, but top three rounds, eee, I don't like that. On top of the fact that we have to take a player with term and flip him at the draft as well. I don't know. So it wouldn't be impossible, I gotta say. I did some looking around the league, and I think I glossed over the Ottawa Senators a little too quickly, because there are a couple of names here in Ottawa that interest me. I was looking at teams, not just who had players on the block, but losing teams who had players on expiring deals. So sorting by overall, looking at players on expiring deals, looking at uh, all the four Forwards here in Ottawa. So we see some bigger names, Gavin, Teravine, etc. JT Miller, there he is. But I really like looking at these guys down here Pitlick, Cunnan, and Brad Marchand. Now, Brad Marchand has another year on his deal, but he's likely going to be retiring now. 80 overall, 41 years old. He is playing fourth line, second unit power play in Ottawa, and he has 38 points on the year, even plus minus. Still four star defense with the awareness. Really, it's the awareness that helps him out. But he sells the five star puck skills. He's a valuable veteran down there. And it would be quite the story to say, after what happened with the Bruins and the Canucks and their history in the postseason, to have him come end his career in Vancouver. I'm not a big Brad Marchand fan, but that would be quite the storyline. Pitlick also interests me. A guy who's been playing fourth line minutes. Fourth line, 8.22 per night, 24 points and a plus 8 on the year. This impresses me. So Rem Pitlick wouldn't be a bad option for us either. And Cunnan, he wouldn't be, well, actually the negative 13 kind of turns me off. Uh, on the third line, so probably more Pitlick and Marchand. So if we get Pitlick and Marchand a type of deal here, I think, or maybe even just Pitlick, that would interest me, because they'd be playing more fourth line than third line. I really didn't want to move O'Brien yet, but it's seeming like th that might be the, the case that we're in here. Can I give you O'Brien, Klimovich, and a sixth 
for two expiring UFAs. Ottawa, yes, you're technically a winning team, but you have these two depth guys on your block. It's not going to hurt you too badly to move them. I think this would be a win-win for everybody because O'Brien and Klimovich provide value right now. You get two guys who are going to be gone for sure. O'Brien's an expiring RFA. You can keep his rights. You get a sixth round pick. I see this working out here. So Ottawa, what do you say to this? It is quite far off in value. Really? Yeah? Quite far off. I guess we can give one of our fifths here. What's our other fifth? Edmonton and... Okay, we'll keep ours. We'll trade Edmonton's, I suppose. What do you say for a fifth? Still rejected. You aren't really need to be in value offered. So maybe we're going in a completely different direction then. So I'll throw you a fourth, and I'll take back a seventh just to see what the message would be. I think it'll be rejected, but I just want to see what the message in the trade would be. You're quite far off in value. Final offer with the fourth... You're quite far off. Now, nah, forget it then. I can't take back both of these players. Pitlick provides the better depth, I think, and he could stay beyond this season. Marchand, again, the cooler story, but he provides more of the scoring. And while we want the scoring, we also want the defense. So if I want just Rem Pitlick now, I'll keep O'Brien for the time being. Again, as an expiring RFA, we're not in a huge rush to move him. Could I just swap you Klimovich for Pitlick type of thing? No, not even. Understandable. Klimovich and a sixth for Pitlick. Two guys expiring UFAs who probably wouldn't be back either way. Klimovich, 30 penalty minutes, negative 12. I really want to make him work. Second round pick from 2021. But if it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. Ottawa, what do you say to this? Still quite far off. Come on, Ottawa. Come on, be honest with me. A fifth in Klimovich is my final offer. You aren't where you need to be. Final offer would be a fourth for a seventh back. I have two fourths and I have no seventh. I'll give you a fourth for a seventh. I'm not taking off the seventh. Final offer. Fourth for a seventh auto. Rejected? No. Goodbye. Forget it. Forget it! Ridiculous. Those were fair offers. Okay, put a pause on acquiring a forward for a second. I wouldn't mind getting a third goal. There's a little bit of uh, some insurance here. Arizona has some goaltenders on the block here. I looked around the entire league. Akira Schmid on the block. He's currently backing up in Arizona. Expiring deal. And through 10 games, 935 save percentage from Akira Schmid. 6-2 and 2.09 and goals against average. I wouldn't mind having an 82 overall as third goalie. With limited trade value as well, I would not mind that at all. Could we just move you a pick to get this done? With as little as a sixth round pick get this done? Probably not, but let's see. Would a sixth get it done? Too far off? We can go for a fifth. I think that should be enough. Yeah, fifth round pick should get this done. Still too far off. Here you go. Johan Ackerlund. Seventh round pick. The last pick of the 2029 draft. 224th overall. 20 years old. 57 overall. Low top 4D potential. Can we just give you straight up for Schmid? No. With pedal, no. With pedal and a sixth. If I didn't accept this offer, they'd call for my resignation. <laughs> Ridiculous. Okay, Kier Schmid, third goalie, gives us a little bit of insurance. Thank you very much. But we still got to do something for our bottom six, and I'm not liking the options out here. So we're gonna go to the player search. Okay, so give me any player on an expiring deal between 80 and 82 overall, any forward that is, and stick checking at least 80. Let's see what the results are. 95 players. So I don't want any prospects here, like uh, guys who are finishing up their ELCs. So let's say 23 and up, that brings it to 93 results. Takes out a couple players. Okay, so 23 and up. Uh, is it still players? No, not all of them on ELCs. Uh, okay, but let's refine the search a little bit more then. Stick checking 82, shot blocking 80. How about that? Brings it down to 51 results now. Okay, a bit better. May as well refine it further. Let's go 82 on the shot blocking, 84 on the stick checking. Brings it down to 32 results. Okay, let's bump it to 24 as well, down to 31 results. Okay. Now from these players, who stands out with the question? Looking at the plus minuses especially. Who stands out? Uh, plus 11 from Kasperi Kapanen. Three and a half star defense, but Florida's a good team. Yeah, they're not going to want to do that. Uh, Beauvilliers, four games played this season. I think Beauvilliers could be an option for us. He hasn't gotten to play much. Uh, I saw Sean Couturier here as well. Yeah, he's on a bad Seattle team. Expiring guy, veteran. Sean Couturier might be the guy here. Limited ice time, 20 points on the year. He might be the guy. Not on the block, but the Kraken are sellers. 
So I'm sure you'd be more interested in in, in Danila Klimovich than Sean Couturier. You're on. He's on the. He matches your needs as well. So Danila Klimovich for Sean Couturier. Just a little swap here. We know that Klimovich will only be a depth guy if he even cracked the roster. So could I get a seventh and Sean Couturier from you? No, eh? Let's just try it straight up. You want Klimovich for Sean Couturier? What do you say, Seattle? Still rejected, man. Okay, we're digging into the 7th in a few years' time now. 7th in 2032. This is a really good deal for us. Uh, I hope you know what you're doing. Yeah, thank you, Seattle. We'll be okay. Sean Couturier, welcome to Vancouver, Bello. Danila Klimovich, thank you for your time here with the Canucks organization. One of the original players who were here when we took over. So sad to move you, but it just wasn't working out on that fourth line. Sean Couturier can hopefully give us a little bit of stability down there. And would Goldman move off? Goldman with his 80 face-offs. Yeah, he would move to the wing probably. Maybe even put Colson moves down. Let's just put him in the lineup and see first. So Couturier has a solid enough fit here on the fourth line. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Goldman though, the ice time is hurting Goldman. I want to get him on the third line. Can I bump him up and put Colson comes down? Yeah, he has a negative nine. Yeah, let's have put Colson come down with Couturier and neighbors. O'Brien will play with Ratu and Goldman. Goldman goes center. Yeah. Uh, O'Brien, I'd be tempted to try him on the first line, as good as Norris has been. Because I think we're at a point here where we'll say, okay, this is it for O'Brien. He's an expiring RFA. We'll trade him in the offseason. I don't think we'll move him here at the deadline. But this is, you know, these last 20 games will be his last chance to show us anything. And this third line is not really working out for him. Maybe a few games with Goldman and then a few games on the first line to end the year. I don't know. But let's try it like that. Sean Couture, fourth line centerman with the three and a half star defense, 89 faceoffs and all that. We'll give him some penalty kill time, probably. Patterson, Ratu, Markstrom, Goldman, uh, Norris, Podkolzin. Podkolzin, you haven't been impressing me, so let's move Podkolzin out. Norris can play the wing. Yeah, we said we want to make an, a, a change to our penalty kill. That's true. So that's exactly where Couture is going to go. Uh, and then maybe Norris swaps with Goldman. And it'll be Couturier Goldman with the plus two. Marshall Norris with the plus two. Okay, let's do that. Uh, and goaltending, we have Schmid in the lineup here as well now. Good. Okay, so there are changes, ladies and gentlemen. Couturier joins the team, joins the penalty kill. Schmid as third goalie. A couple of deadline moves for our depth, and that'll be it here. Headed into the end of the season. It says we're over the salary cap. Am I seeing that right? When we go to the proposed trade screen, we're at 102 million. No, okay, 98.796. Okay, good, good, good. So let's uh, sim through the deadline now. I know it'll be tempting to think about more moves, but I think those were a couple of solid ones to make. We'll sim through the deadline and looking for a win number 40 the first day after the deadline, which would be against Vegas. So we'll sim through the deadline and see what the rest of the league did. All right, so after our trades, we see Dante Fabro and Alex Cafello going to the Oilers. Hemming to the Islanders, Pellick to the Devils, Cam York to the Panthers, uh, Fasman to the Kings, back to the Kings, Johnny Goudreau and Alex Turcotte going to the Islanders, uh, Sebastian Kosa going to the Avalanche, Nicholas Haig to the Devils, Zadorov to, or Zadorov to the Wild, Pierre Engvall, I was thinking about Pierre Engvall, another Swede to join us, but his trade value was a little too high, Pierre Engvall to the Oilers, so the Oilers were definitely busy. There's the trade deadline. Nothing too crazy, but definitely busy for the Oilers. Here we go, looking for win number 40 in game number 65. The final stretch now towards the end of the season, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see where we can finish in the standings with the bit of a new look squad here, giving them their last chances to impress us. Let's go. First period, and it's 1-0. Jake Neighbors on his new fourth line with Sean Couturier. Let's go. Doubling the shots. Second period, 2-0. Owen oh, Tippett, thank you very much. Still close to doubling the shots. Uh, third period power play early is killed off by Vegas power play Vegas now the other way extended opportunity for the Golden Knights we kill that off with a new look penalty kill another chance five on three for Vegas extended power plays oh my goodness almost a whole third period penalty kill we kill them all off just to allow an even strength goal two even strength goals back to back but hold on Josh Norris answers the call says don't move me off the first line and we win four to two almost choking it oh my goodness two nothing the whole game and in the final three minutes we almost choke it Shots end 41 to 30, and we win 4 to 2. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Owen Tippett, goal and assist. Hunter Jones, 28 saves. Good. And Josh Norris, the game winning goal. He says, don't move me off that first line. Sheesh. All right, back to the calendar simulation now. Let's go see those mighty Edmonton Oilers in Edmonton. Why not? We face them next week. We'll sim through that one. Then we'll go see them in Edmonton. Hronik has a fractured left elbow. There's the injury trouble I was talking about. We didn't have to face that. I jinxed. 
thankfully only until April 6th, the fractured elbow, only out till April 6th, so that'll hurt us for now, Jared McIsaac will come into the lineup, uh, I don't want to put Bouchard back up there, I wonder if playing Andrew Peake as a defensive defenseman would do anything for Quinn Hughes, I wonder, Bouchard man, you're killing me, uh, Bouillon, yeah, he'll play with Jared McIsaac, who will come in there on the third pair. We can substitute in all lines. Whoa, terrible fit. Nah, that's not true, though. If I exit and come back in, I don't think there would be negative three. That's not true. But thankfully, it's not for long. Whatever. McIsaac, welcome back to the lineup. Hasn't been in a while. Kale Flurry on waivers. 79 overall, Kale Flurry. You know what? Yup. Uh, fits all deep pairings, according to the Pro Scout. Yes. Thank you, Kale Flurry. Welcome to the organization. I don't mind having you as depth. Absolutely not. All right, so we win 4-2 against Vegas, but then 7-4 loss, 4-3 overtime loss, 6-4 loss. The goaltending is killing me. Akira Schmid, I'm going to give you the start in the next one here. Sim up to the day and get him in on Etienne Morin, also another defenseman on waivers. 77 overall, former second round pick. Uh, he could be an AHL guy. Etienne Morin. You know what? I'm going to claim Morin. Here's what's going to happen. Hold on a second. I'm going to go to roster moves here. But now I can't call them up. I want to call them up and then send them back down to not cheese the system. But we are one of the best teams, so if everyone passed except for us and a couple others, I doubt the the Sabres would have taken, or the Avalanche would have taken Morin or Fleury. So Morin can be in our system, and Fleury can be 7th D, waiting to be called up if we have another injury to the defense defense core. Jones, 904 save percentage, 3.16 goals against average. Hunter, man. Hunter... All right, Akira Schmid, you're getting the start, making his Vancouver Canucks debut. 9.35 save percentage in Arizona this past year. We were thinking about signing him as our backup in free agency. He went to Arizona, now we end up trading for him. Akira, let's go. Hosting the Edmonton Oilers, 40-win Oilers. Let's do it! 4-1 win, Akira, yes! Great Canucks debut at home, Akira Schmid, thank you. Let's keep him in for another one. Let's keep him in for one more. And for just one game. I've been saying it a lot. Let's do it. O'Brien, Pedersen, LeCaramacchi. Let's go in for the slow sim. I want to see this one. Against the Minnesota Wild here at home. They're 32, 27, and 8. Let's go. Caden O'Brien, you're getting first line opportunity. You've been waiting for it. Go out there and do something. First period, 3-1. I'm looking for his name. Hannafin, then Boldy on the power play, but then Tippett and Ratu. Very good. Norris back on the third line. Second period, 4-2. LeCaramacchi and Trent Frederick. Shots are 31-18. We're up 4-2. Power play, Vancouver. Killed off. Power play, Mini. It's Marco Rossi scoring on Schmid. Another power play now for Minnesota. Again, this time killed off. 4-3 Vancouver. Power play again for Mini. Stop the penalty. But then Lundqvist scores on power play. As our penalty expires. Another power play for Minnesota. Come on. Stay out of the box, boys. Up by 2-2 two, two to go. Kaprizov scores late. Don't choke it. Final minute. Oh my goodness. Come on. Hooking, slashing, slashing, slashing. It's always the slashing. Everybody's tripping, slashing, hooking. That's all that happens in this game. Shots end 41 to 34, and we barely hang on for the 5 4 victory. Tip it a goal and an assist. <sighs> I should have checked the, the logs to see Caden O'Brien. Oh my goodness. Let's go Schmid one more time before we have a back to back and they take turns. Yeah, you see, there's actually a zero on the, the third pair. It's not actually a negative three. So there you go. Don't be fooled. Schmid facing the Oilers once again. He beat them 4-1 to one in his debut at home. Now we're on the road at Rogers Place in Edmonton. Let's go through it quickly. First period, 3-1. Thank you, Lundqvist, Norris, and Hughes. Second period, 3-3. <laughs> Bourgo and Entwistle. Three goals on 19 shots. It can be that some people, some goalies do great in the slow sim and terrible in the calendar. Others, vice versa. 3-3, almost halfway through this third period. Shots 27-22 for the Oilers. No scoring at all here in the third into the final five minutes. Next one may be the winner. It's Quinn Hughes. The captain puts us up 4-3. to three. Will that be enough? Only 24 shots on that this entire game, and it is. Shots end 30-24, to 24, but we win 4-3. to three. Quinn Hughes, Norris, and Lundqvist, second and third stars there, respectively. Caden O'Brien, what are you doing? Anything? Caden, where are you? Nothing. 23-16 of ice time. Nothing. I haven't seen his name. I know maybe he got an assist in there, but that's, uh, what, three games now on the first line and we don't see him do anything? Goal scoring wise? Maybe Lundqvist comes up. Let's try Lundqvist on the top line. The Flying Swedes on the first line. Let's try that. Let's go a little crazy. 
And Schmid, you're looking good, but I'm, I'll give you a rest here. Three games, three wins, 913 save percentage. But I'll give him a rest. Let's go back to Hunter Jones. We'll face the Kraken here. Just want to do a quick slow sim so I can see in-game stats. Box score, I should say. First period, 1-0 Quinn Hughes. Second period, 2-0 Pud Coles. And I haven't seen him in a while. 3-0 shutout. Caden O'Brien with the icing on the cake. And it's a 36 save shutout. Hunter Jones says, don't forget about me. Goal and assist from the captain and Caden O'Brien getting goal on the second line now. So maybe with Markstrom, that's the, the, the key. Play him with Markstrom, I suppose. All right, 10 games left in the year. Pedersen and his 90-plus point pace. We'll see if he gets there. Another game, I think this will be Schmid between the pipes. 4-2 win. All right, let's keep going. Against the Kings on the road. Peak is healthy. Okay, that's fine. On the road, 4-2 loss. Now, a couple of days later, three days later, we're hosting the Kings after losing 4-2. Now, we lose 4-2 again. We've clinched the postseason, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Looking good. Now, hosting the Calgary Flames. 7-2 win, finally. Uh, against the Blues now. Yeah, we can do one more. Let's do one more, then we'll get Heronic back in the lineup for the next game. 4-2 loss. So, 4-2 loss, 4-2 loss, 7-2 win, 4-2 loss. The last four games were 46, 24, and 7. Heronic back to full health, as we expected. Peaks plus minus got better. Okay, that's good to see. Put him back down there. McIsaac, 10 games, 1 assist, even plus minus. All right, well done, Jared. Thank you. Heronic comes back to the top pair. And goaltending, Jones will continue, I suppose. Schmid got another start, though, correct? Yeah, okay, seven games, five and one now. So Schmid, he's looking good. He's looking very good. So Schmid can stay in for this next game against the Blackhawks. Let's just make sure, again, double check. In the AHL, we're 36, 26, and two. Yeah, Schmid will start, okay. Karamaki, how's the goal scoring? 38 goals from the Karamaki, wow. So, yeah, O'Brien, we're going to try him with marks from a little bit more. 17 goals he's at now. I think he was at maybe 14 before we bumped him up in the third line. So, let's keep going. Schmid in for another one here, hosting the Blackhawks. 3-1 loss, not his fault, though. Another game here against the Sharks. 4-3 shootout loss. Oh, we're falling apart here at the end. We've clinched our division, but we aren't where we should have been. Final few games of the season now. Let's go back to probably where we what we should probably be having. Let's go back to this to Lungfist and Markstrom together. Norris back on the first line. Let's get back to that. And goaltending, let's go back to Schmid again. Here against the lowly Dallas Stars, who are going to just absolutely destroy us. No! Thankfully, finally, an 8-1 win. That's what we want to see. Markstrom, 89 points. Finally, finally, finally. I'm going to give the avalanche to Schmid now. And then Hunter Jones will end the season against the Predators. So lines going back to what they were there <laughs> seem to be very helpful. Schmid is going to be a tough one here. A tough matchup here against the Avalanche. 53, 18, and 9 are the Avalanche. Let's go one last game for Schmid. 3-2 shootout win. Maybe he starts the postseason. I don't know. Hunter Jones, let's give you the last game of the year. One last chance for you to prove yourself now. All right, he's back in. Game 82 of year number 7, ladies and gentlemen, to close off our 7th regular season with the Canucks. Facing the 48, 28, and 5 Predators. So not an easy matchup for um, for Jones either. Looking for win number 49 now. We were on pace to win 54. Can we at least get to 49? First period, 1-0, Owen Tippett. Set, doubling the shots, 18 to 9. Shveshkov, we were looking at him in the offseason. And they two quick goals in the second period. Second period ends 4-3 to three, though. Two quick goals from the Predators, but then Hannafin answers back. Rubric gets one more, but then the Ratu shorthanded, and the Ratu a minute later, again, even strength. Shots 26 to 24, and we're up by one, thanks to two goals from Ratu. Pud Colson extends our lead to two, and Pedersen makes it 6 to 3. From down 3 2 to up 6 4 now, as Moore just got one back for the Predators. Shots are 34 30 to close out the season. Can we end with 49 wins? Five less than where we should have been, but can we end with 49? Up by two with five to go, Caden O'Brien. That might be all we need. I don't know if he's coming back next year, but at least he gave us a little bit of an effort towards the end. Shots end 41 to 34, and we win game number 82 by a score of 7 to 4. A goal and two assists for Pedersen, two goals from Ratu, and a goal and assist from good old Vasily Putkolzin. We end the season, ladies and gentlemen, 49, 25, and 8. Uh, let's get everyone to play their 82nd game as we see Pedersen. Very good, 92 points from him. Game 82 for everybody has been played. Let's check out the standings. Okay, so with our 106 points, we win the Pacific Division. We jump over the Edmonton Oilers, who seem to falter a little bit towards the end there. And in the entire NHL, we finish 
fourth. All right, fourth place. The Avalanche just really took off 118 points for them in the end. But we were the second best team in the Western Conference. The Maple Leafs and the Sabres also above us. 49, 25, and 8 was the record. Our scoring picked up a little bit, up to 3.62 goals for per game. Still a bit lower than I'd like it to be. Goals against at 3.13. Still eighth best, yeah. Eighth lowest, I should say. A power play of 27.6. That picked up and ended number one in the NHL. That's great. Did we get a penalty kill above 80%? 80 backed up to 81.4. So the acquisition of Sean Couturier seemed to help at least by a little percentage there. Around the half, yeah, a little bit closer to the top than the bottom. Now the points, Elias Pettersson ended with 92, Markstrom with 91, Quinn Hughes 76. Just a quick little glance here. LeCare Mackey 40 goals, Lunk with 72 points, Tippett 68. Yes, yes, yes. All right, let's start breaking it all down now. So in the second half, Elise Pedersen exceeded his first half pace of 90 points. He gets 92, so a 47 point second half in 41 games, 28 goals, 64 assists, new career high in assists, uh, yeah, by, by one, how about that? And the highest point total that we had with him through our entire series so far. Yes, 92 points from Pedersen, love to see that. Very well done from the player who should be our rock year in and year out. So well done to him. Markstrom, 91 points. The Swedish chef, 16 goals, 75 assists, 91 points. Career high from him. Always in the 70s. He jumps up to 91 in his first year out of Montreal. Plus 29 to boot. Not as prolific in the second half as he only scored 45 instead of 46, but we can accept that. The big one was Quinn Hughes. We got to keep him with Philip Peronik, it looks like. Oh my goodness. He was on pace for 56 points. He ends with 76 as he scored 48 points in 41 games in the second half. That is crazy for a defenseman. That's ridiculous stuff. Only 15 power play points as well. At even strength, he was incredible. The captain woke up and we love to see it. Jonathan LeCaramacchi was on pace for 40 goals, and he hits 40 goals. 75 points from the 25-year-old, former 15th overall pick in 2022. Some people thought that he was done. We said, wait, wait, it's not over yet. Let's give him the ice time. And he has flourished ever since. 30-point guy the first couple years. 52 points last season with 18-24 of ice time. We give him another couple minutes, 20-31 per night, and he hits 75 points, close to point per game. 40 goals from the Swede, of course, by far, obviously the best season of his career. Incredible numbers, and I hope that he sees some big off-season growth. Really happy to see that from LeCar Mack because we were getting scared if he was stagnating. Frederick Lundqvist in his rookie season ends with 43 goals and 72 points. Slows down his pace a little bit from the first half. As both he and LeCaramacchi were on pace for 78, and they finished with 72 and 75 respectively. But I'll still take a 43-goal rookie season, leading our team in goals to boot from Frederick Lundqvist, the Swedish sniper. What is there to say? Again, only in 16-23 of ice time. So next year, when he's seeing first line, first unit power play, whew, we could see something even more in his sophomore season. Owen Tippett was a really big surprise as well. He ends on the exact same pace, 34 points in the first half, 34 points in the second half, but at one point he looked to be slowing down, he picked it up, ends with 68, exactly what he was on pace to do, what he scored a couple seasons ago as well, tying his career high and his best season as a Canuck. So Owen Tippett, very well done from you. That's why we acquired you. Again, only in 1538 of ice time. That's crazy. Very well done. Josh Norris, he slowed down from the pace that he was on a little bit because he played around with his ice time. But still, 59 points from him. 35 points in 41 games in the second half. I'm glad we kept him. My goodness. Evan Bouchard, not in the 50s, 60s, but I'm glad to see him get to 45. He was on pace for 40, so we'll take the 45, especially considering that he went from first pair D, first unit power play, to second pair D, second unit power play. We'll take the increase in production, 25 points in the second half. Atu Ratu slowed down, but understandably so, from 21 and a half minutes to 17 and a half minutes per night, 44 points, so just 18 points in the second half, it looks like, from him. Philip Ronick, 44, he slowed down because it was more support giving towards uh, the captain, Quinn Hughes. Just a real trooper, doing what he has to do for his captain, for the good of the team. He was on pace for 58 points, but he says, it's okay, I'll slow down a little bit. He scores 44. He's still a plus 34. Philip Peronik, thank you for everything. That's why you are who you are. And I'm glad that you're still signed on. Yeah, for three more years. Love it. Caden O'Brien ends with 19 goals and 37 points. Ah, eh, he picked it up. He was on a 31 point pace. His ice time is still limited. It's not 
horrible production. Again, it's not horrible. But for a guy we drafted in the first round, a power forward we'd love to see in the top six, I don't think he'll ever get there. If his best is being a third line left wing, I don't know if we have enough room for him with other players in the system wanting to get ice time. Goldman ends with 25 points. His ice time went up a little bit as well, so that's good to see. Next year, he should be the lock for third line center. Sean Couturier, I'm curious, what did Sean Couturier do? Five points and a plus one in 18 games. Just playing 10-18 per night. A shorthanded goal, that's great. That's very good. Very good, especially considering what we had with Klimovich. The bottom six plus minus seems to have improved. Noah Hannafin, 25 points plus 16. Put Coles in 21 points. Neighbors, 20 points on the fourth line. Limited ice time. Yeah. Bouillon ends with 15 points in his rookie season. Not bad. Andrew Peak, 7. McIsaac, 1 assist in 10 games. All right. So there's the season that was goaltending now. Hunter Jones ends 32, 16, and 6. Four shutouts, 904 save percentage, 3.15 goals against average. A little shaky at times, I have to admit. Leonov in his 21 appearances, 10, 8, and 2. Should we send him down to the AHL at this point if we're rolling with Schmid? That's probably the better idea because Schmid in his 10 appearances goes 7 and 2, 923 save percentage, 2.38 goals against average. So our trade deadline moves really came through. Schmid has looked very, very solid. Should he see a game in the first round potentially? That'll be a question for us heading into next episode. Leonov likely goes down. I think that it's just going to be Jones and Schmid in the postseason. So Leonov, probably better luck next season type of thing. I don't know if Schmid stays. I don't know what. But I think for this year, we can say that Leonov can go to the AHL. So what? tons of things to recap in our scoring. So many good stories to follow. In the entire NHL, Miko Rantanen scored 122 points to lead the NHL. And in goals, it was Mishkov with 67. Oh my goodness. Looking at defensive scoring in the NHL, it was Kellen Carr with 93. Quinn Hughes in his, with his strong second half ends second in defensive scoring. So you know what? He can get back to a Norris next year with Hughes with uh, Hronik on his right. It's possible. And then goaltending, Carter Hart, 43 wins. Wouldn't even be in the league at this point. Levi with 42, Samsonov. If we look at minimum, let's say, I don't know, uh, yeah, 30 games played, why not? Save percentage, it looks like it's probably the Vezina for Hart, you would think. Uh, unfortunate storyline, probably Devin Levi in the mix as well. We'll see, we'll see. And finally, looking at rookie skaters, it's got to be Lungfist winning the Calder. And yeah, it looks like it's a lock here. 72 points from him. The first overall pick, Samalainen, 32 points, playing first line. The first overall pick playing the first line scores 32 points. Granted, on a very bad team, but still. The second overall pick, Ned Buss, playing on the fourth line. Yikes, scores 27 points. And then Lundqvist, with his minutes, scores 72 points. you got to think that it's going to be the Calder Trophy for him with a slam dunk victory. I'm so happy we got him at three. So this has definitely been a long enough episode. There's so much that happened. So many great storylines to follow. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts in the comments. Let's just see who our opponent will be in round number one and call it an episode. In round number one of year number seven, after winning the cup two years ago and missing the postseason last year, we're back in 2030. And we will face the... Los Angeles Kings in round number one. Let's check out their lines. We've actually yet to face the Kings so far, so this will be the first time we face them in our seven years in Vancouver. Fiala, Byfield, and Marchenko, their first line. Fajimo, Dubois, and McKenna on the second. Kraus, McQueen, and Yamsen, Jamsen? I think it's Yamsen on the sec on the third, excuse me. And former Canuck, Connor Garland with Evan Rodriguez and Jacob Pelletier on the fourth. So the depth is there. They have middle six players on their fourth line. Every forward between 81 and 89 overall here in Los Angeles. Defense, Kivi Haru and Clark. How about that for a top pair? Woo! Matt Roy, former Canuck, and Zach Wierenski on the second pair. Ty Smith and Ilya Labushkin on the third pair. Brand Clark, what kind of numbers has he put up here? 59 points this past season. Boy. All right, and goaltending, it is Thatcher Demko. Wow! How about this for a storyline, ladies and gentlemen? Thatcher Demko, who we traded away to the Avalanche, and then he signed with the Kings. He's in his fourth season here in Los Angeles. His numbers have been solid. They've been, yeah, okay numbers, especially for EA. Not the greatest, but okay numbers. 
but the playoffs last year he got eliminated despite having a 941 save percentage and 1.95 goals against average last year in 2029 so the kings will be hungry this season demko Roy, garland all former players and chris drieger backing him up scratches olison krebs gustafson this is a strong kings team i have to admit this is a very strong Kings team. Kevin Fiala, legend in our San Francisco Starfleet franchise mode series, live every Thursday evening here on the channel. Byfield, what kind of numbers for him? 62 points. Yeah, so the depth is definitely here in the lineup. The depth is absolutely there. Won't be an easy first round. The Kings went 41, 37, and 4 on the year. We both finished 5, 4, and 1 in our last 10 games. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, heading into next episode, the big things would just be, do we consider any contract extensions? That's probably on the back burner right now, but just to throw it out there. Josh Norris, we said that he's gone. He wants six million. Yeah, just it's more for the fit. Caden O'Brien wants 2.8, but yeah. But Colson, Neighbors, Couturier, we can deal with all these guys later on. Not a big deal. And for the goaltending, Schmid would need a contract at this point if he were to stay as our backup. And he doesn't want a lot of money. We could lock him into a cheap deal right now, league minimum for one year, and see what happens from there. We could do that. We have over $11 million in uh, budget for next season at this point. And that'll just about do it. So line suggestions, special teams, get all that down here in the comments or over on the Discord server. Link in the description, ladies and gentlemen. Leave a like if you enjoyed the episode. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already to be made aware of all of our uploads here on the channel, our Canuck series on NHL 24, our San Francisco Starfleet live stream on NHL 24 going on Thursday evenings, and our Montreal Expos, Washington Nationals, Relocation, MLB The Show 24 franchise mode live on Tuesday evenings here on the channel as well. So we got three series going on, plus a lot more career simulations league simulations we'd love to have you be a part of it could be that much stronger of a team with you on it it was an exciting second half some ups some downs who are you most impressed with who are you most disappointed with what kind of changes do we make if any headed into the postseason who gets the start what kind of leash are they on a lot of questions to be asked a lot of questions to be answered for the next episode and i look forward to reading all of your thoughts so thank you ladies and gentlemen for taking the time to watch the second half of our seventh season here in vancouver and i'm looking forward to a very exciting postseason ahead as we're going to try to march our way back to another stanley cup victory looking forward to seeing you there for the 2030 postseason.